chronic Tom, you can hear me, right? I can hear you, yeah. Okay. Uh, we're waiting for uh, a face forward, I think, from Pran, if she hasn't done it already. I don't think that's happened yet. Let me see if she's still on. I don't think we're audible. I don't think, I think she, uh, look, you just keep doing what you're doing, okay. and I'm going to type her a text, okay? Mm hmm Great. Hey, Bryn, do you see anything on your screen? Are you looking at the uh, streaming screen? Okay, cool. So it looks like we're facing forward all around. Um, thanks, Bryn. Mm -hmm. Okay, she, uh, Bryn can hear us, yeah, I guess. Yeah, so, so she sees so the screen. Okay, Thank you, Bryn, cool. and uh, I hope you're. Uh, I'm sorry that I missed your uh, your your natural gas class, your energy class with Mike. I hope it went well. Um, certainly, certainly, you didn't tell anyone to sell options. God forbid. Uh, we can't have any of that. Um, only sell it when it's cheap. Only, only sell it when it's right. cheap. Exactly. Yeah. I sell diamonds when they're worth five cents. I buy them when they're worth five million dollars yeah. because because that's what options are. So, so uh, uh, let's start this off to, to get this going officially. Uh, what? Uh, hey, good afternoon, guys. It's a little bit after two. Tom McEntee and myself, I'm Vince Lancey. We're having a little bit of an options class, and uh, we're playing fast and loose today. Uh, some, of the, some of the topics, the one or two of the topics that we want to go back to because the timeliness is so good and it plays right to something that you see Tom do on almost a daily basis is calendar spreads or not necessarily calendar spreads, but how uh, he likes to play or some of the ways that he plays uh, stock options going into earnings or uh, pre and post significant events like earnings. And uh, we have teed up today Netflix and uh, PPG. I'm not sure if PPG is something he looks at, but Netflix, I'm sure he is. Uh, we discuss it uh, frequently here. And uh, uh, if, if we can do that efficiently and there aren't many questions, uh, I'm going to... Uh, introduce uh, a, a trading game uh, that everyone can play that whoever is here, we need at least four people to do it. And uh, basically it would be a trading game determining uh, using math uh, as well as uh, uh, opinion on the market uh, to uh, get some feel for where the market is going. And then we'll stop during the middle of that game if we get to it, uh, assuming we get to it, uh, and we'll discuss what options are worth based on where the underlying is. So. Um, I guess we should start with um, with uh, Netflix. Does anybody have anything they want to talk about uh, uh, in addition, or or uh, that's related to what we what we have uh, in store so far? Uh, Sunil or or Bryn maybe. And if you're if you're a new person, we know there are at least twenty people out there. That's what that's what my data says, and I am a data dependent person, uh, like the Fed. Um, uh, so, so uh, we know there's people out there. So if you have questions or you want to learn something, speak up. We promise we will not uh, uh, mock you. Uh, we, only do, we only do that to people that work for us. Um, so um, I'm not seeing anything from anyone pop in there. So why don't we start with uh, uh, Netflix? Does that work, Tom? Yeah, that's cool. Let's do it. Um, so let's do. I'll do a quick recap while you're while you're while you're while you're getting your your logistics in order there. All right, so Netflix is a stock two days ago that we discussed in, in, in brief that had an event coming up. Not only does it have an, did it have an event coming up, that being today's earnings, it also had an announcement it made uh, on Tuesday, I believe, or maybe Monday night, uh, that they were raising their subscription rates by, I don't know, 8, 10, 11%, depending on what part of the world you were in. And uh, uh, that made the stock jump uh, uh, significantly. And uh, we were going to talk about Types of trades that Tom likes to do, and types of ways to trade 
uh, going into an event. Uh, an earnings event is an event. It's predictable, but it's but it's an event, and certainly it gives opportunities uh, and scenarios where volatility will be volatile in and of itself. And Tom likes to play trades like that, uh, especially if there's back gradation that goes into contango uh, after an event. Uh, uh, not to mention uh, looking at uh, how skew uh, and and volatility will perform after an event. Uh, uh, that's always part of that's part of the uh, the calculus involved in trades like that. But we like we like Netflix because hey, it's a it's a stock everyone cares about. Uh, lately, it moves around. It's nice to trade. And earnings are out uh, today. If they're not out already, I have no idea. I'm a commodity guy. What do I know about stocks? And so uh, we like to start off by uh, 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 maybe I'll throw a couple questions to Tom after he he lays out uh, uh, his macro feel for the stock. Uh, which will be a combination of technical analysis and recent performance of all. And then I'll ask them a couple questions, unless people from the audience have questions about uh, types of trades they'd like to do. So, Tom, you there? Yeah. All right, so I'm, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Can we start on the technical side and then go to options? Can you throw a chart up there? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. You know, you know why I do that? Because, you know, you, you, you play down your technical analysis skills, but it's certainly, certainly a big factor. And I want to do that up front so we can kind of like you know segue into options so um what's your feel for the market directionally and and i think uh, uh just l letting that flow and laying it out would be a good basis for yeah the um, you mean the you mean the overall market uh, right yeah, now you know like, how do you feel about it uh 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 over the last say uh any time period you want to do and what you feel the market would do what how would you handicap the the, the market's reaction, the market, not necessarily volatility yet, the market's reaction to earnings uh, uh, given uh, the, the events of the last, say, two to 10 days. You know what I mean? I want to give a basis directionally for your, because it's going to determine which strikes you pick. It's going to determine your timation, your timing and your duration of trades. And it's going to determine, you know, whether you're buying the, the deferred or selling deferred, you know, and types of trade you do. So, you know, uh, and I'm doing this for myself. Uh, so what do you think about Netflix right now? Well, Netflix, you get the chart up there, right? Okay, cool. All right, here, look, I mean, I think this is very, very interesting. When, when you and I spoke about this, uh, touched on it briefly on, on uh, Tuesday, I believe. Okay. Right. I, I think the last time we, we we traded at these levels, at or near these levels, I mean, it come off pretty much sharply early October, boom, boom, boom. Then earnings happened on, you know, uh, three months, you know, three months today, three months ago today. And I think at the after hours, the stock went through 400, traded like 409-ish. I think the high regular way, regular way trading, regular hours on that Friday, well, I'm sorry, that on that uh, Wednesday was 386, I believe. What do I have here? I'm sorry, 380. You can see this when my mouse is moving. 380. And then we started to cannonball, cannonball lower. The low that day, which I think was very, very interesting, 356.50. Okay, which I think is interesting. Now all of a sudden, we we you know had a steady, steep, three drives to a bottom. I guess you could say that one, two, three, three drives to a bottom down at two thirty, roughly. Uh, I mean, four thirty, two hundred is two hundred out of four thirty is about forty one. You know, about forty seven percent, forty six percent off the top. Okay, so got from two thirty, and then we now you see this. I mean, this is a parabolic. I don't, you know. I didn't really do too well in geometry and stuff like that, uh, but I do know this is a... We, let's say so. We just both skipped it. We went to statistics <laughs> and, and, yeah, and conditional yeah. probabilities and, you know, trigonometry and calculus. Because <laughs> we're smart like that. Shapes is for rookies. We don't do shapes. <laughs> and I look at I mean, look at this move. I mean, the move is is nothing. I mean, it's not hyperbole to say it's incredible. It's dramatic. It's steep. It's relentless. And I mean, there are holes all over the chart. Here's a hole between right. 76 and whatever the heck this low is. And 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 to 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 to, to interject, because uh, I, I was looking at the and again, this is for me. I'm, I'm I'm trying to learn a little bit here. I know I'm looking back at the past earnings. The last earnings on July 16th. Uh, uh, well, no, you, you, you no but watch what I'm doing. Watch what I'm doing. July 16th, earnings came out. The market tanked. Yeah, right. July, okay. uh, October 8th, earnings came out the market tanked earnings are coming out today and we've had a ramp up from the lows now the ramp ups happened for two reasons one uh it had to do with the december 24th ppt rescue and and two uh, uh they had this news come out uh on tuesday uh that was they're going to raise subscription prices and the market loved it so so here we are 
uh, uh, what's your what's your what's your feel? Um, and then you know I'm going to ask you the questions that 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 bring it to light why you feel that way. What's your feel? It's kind of like I'm interviewing you on this. What's your feel going into earnings today, given everything your experience, the fact that they released uh, uh, news, be big news before the earnings, and that the last two earnings have been negative. I mean, you know, how does what what do you what comes out of this 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 soup that you're looking at for the next say 48 hours of trading? You know. 50, well, 50 up, down. I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to corner you and say, are you bullish or bearish? You know, I'm not doing no. that. I'm talking options with you. So no, that's fine. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, no, no, I would I, look, I mean, to, to anybody, to even though the most unbiased casual observer, this move, it's 54%, 230 to 360. It's 54% in three weeks, three weeks. This isn't like I always say, it's my big fallback line. It's not a biotech. It's Netflix. It's a, it's a real company. 54 percent, right. three weeks, with a lot of holes. The steepness of descent, the, the steepness of this ascent is obviously unsustainable. And I just think, as a matter of course, you know, we had the stocks don't typically act this way. This is everyone out. I mean, this last push to the bottom. Just, I mean, any any nervous longs left or or greedy shorts who wanted to press their bets probably did so. You know, in this region here, and then you know how it is. It's like holding a basketball underwater for so right. long. Well, well, I don't. I, I know that. I know that we're not. We're not. We're both not deep. Uh, deep in technical analysis, but I do remember because uh, uh, we're going to bring this right into options. Because I'm going to try and get you to handicap up, down, or sideways based based on the earnings and everything you're talking about now. But we've got three, three, one, two, three, four gaps. I mean, wasn't there wasn't there like an old school technical analysis about you know uh, 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 opening gap, runaway gap, and then you know end gap? You know what I mean? Like oh, yeah, look, I always, I've always believed that gaps always get filled. They just do. You may forget about them. They may, they may take some time and it may not be relevent when they do fill, but right, they right, do. Right, right, I right. think I, I haven't seen this is, you know, it's like, four it's, well, I'm looking at four gaps. Am I crazy? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And usually absolutely it's like the, right. the three gap rule, but now we're in the four gap area. So, so, so here's my question. Uh, so here's my next question. Given the steepness of the ascent, Part of it is because of, of, of the market rescue, and part of it uh, uh, is in no small part uh, is because of the uh, announcement the other day. My question is, do you, if you, you know, again, put, put it, look, we're, we're, we're options traders, right? So put a delta on it. What's your delta of the market? Uh, uh, I'm not going to say high, lower, unchanged, but I'm going to give you like concepts. What's your delta that the market has largely discounted the earnings and all the good news it can? Uh, and that uh, and that the the, the spike uh, uh, the gap ability uh, or, or or run up higher uh, is you know uh, done uh, versus what's your handicap probability that uh, we we still haven't had a, a blow off top to this steep incline you know what I mean like uh, yeah sure I mean. Uh, you know, Netflix specific, I got a lot. I've got a what I think is a fairly good take, whether it turns out to be profitable or not, I don't know. And that's fine. That's what we do. We handicap yeah. and we place our bets. Yeah. Right. So I, I look, I mean, this this is unsustainable, right? I mean, these gaps are going to get filled one way or the other. Whether right. they get filled tonight, I don't know. But I think I, I went back and the way I the way I try and structure trades here is I will look, I go back eight quarters, roughly seven or eight quarters, and I want to find out. Because I'm always my trades are usually going to be centered centered around selling that uh, front series, right, whatever, right, right. Ratios. That's typically sometimes I'll buy, but, but very, very today, here's the thing, though. Here, you know, you know why this is actually has become interesting to me as opposed to the normal. Hey, we're going into earnings, sell the front month vol, buy the deferred vol, and and bet uh, and bet that uh, that the contango will return and 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 the gam will be worthless to those people uh, in the move. Is the fact that I think Netflix straddle is actually relatively low, and it's almost like the the vol. And I don't know. You're gonna to have to give me the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The context based on Netflix's uh, uh, implied vol history. But I think that straddle seems, and I could, I don't mind being wrong, seems low given the moves we've had, and and it's almost like it's discounting that whatever the earnings is, it's no news. You know what I mean? Like the straddle is like twenty four dollars or something. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping. Yeah. I know right. I'm getting you off the screen to the options. No, 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 no. That's what I'm getting at. Like normally it's like, let's look, looking at, you know, the Tom McEntee, you know, uh, 
go-to trade is going into earnings, buy the back, you know, buy the 60 day, sell the 30 day and bet that the gamma differential isn't worth it. And that the vague is going to go from backward data to contango. Sorry to use so many big words for guys that may, may not be that familiar with these terms, but what we're talking about here is one of the trades that, that is a, a favorite uh, of Tom's and, and, and one that I understand equally well, but uh, don't have the stomach for it is um, uh, selling uh, short term uh, backward dated volatility going into an event because the implied vol in this situation almost never is fully realized in the underlying move after the event. But now I'm looking at this saying, is the vol maybe oversold or am I missing like, is the, am I missing the context here? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, to your point about the straddle, the straddle is roughly what, 20, uh, roughly 30 bucks, 29, it, 29 and a half. Is that yeah, low? It, yeah. It, that, that's eight and a half percent. And now, now I try to compare apples to apples. So I know if I'm going to be selling tomorrow, the expiration that, that expired tomorrow, I know I have one day to live with it. I know I have one day to be long and or, you know, long or short that uh, right, right. option. So how I would do that is I go back and look at the last eight quarters. I want to look at the extreme. Right. The minus move in the stock for that time period. So if, 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 if earnings came out on a Tuesday and you had three days to expiration, I'll look three days. Wednesday, I look two days. If it's coming out tonight, I got one day to live with it. And interestingly okay. enough, Netflix, Netflix, over the last uh, five quarters or four quarters, I'm sorry, last four quarters, has had at least a 10% move on the extreme one way or the other. So it's been two tens of 14 and a 13%, I'm sorry, two tens of 14 and a 13% move at the extremes. Now, obviously, no one gets to buy or sell at the extremes. I understand that. But if you're short these things, that's where you know, you're going to be feeling some pain at these levels. Expect to feel some pain. You know, gotcha. Around the two and a half percent level. So, so that's your historic the, worst case scenario, into, or that's your historic widest. Yeah. Case so scenario. Um, that's your database right. to start with. Okay. Twelve percent of this thing is what forty two bucks. Right. 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 So right. you know that that puts us at three ten or three ninety four. Uh, right. I gotta believe. Look, I, I don't want to bet up in this thing. Look, the time to bet up in this thing was probably in here somewhere. You know, when it was right, just right. endless selling and you could have been doing one by twos out to wherever and how, how have you structured them. Right, right. I can't bet up here. But that said, I'll probably be wrong. But Well, uh, how many one by two players probably got killed on the way up? You know, uh, uh, this is directly to your point, to your points. And and and, and so, so I want to put this in options terms for people because we are talking options, but Tom and I are using terminology that uh, isn't necessarily options wonkish. So I'm going to get a little options wonky here. And I, and I think it's really a cool point. Tom, if I'm if I'm hearing this correctly, you know, I just want to put this out there for people to understand. Tom's saying, hey, before I make a decision which way I'm going to go or if I'm going to go, uh, I'm looking at the market and I'm saying, well, what are the biggest, the last three biggest moves, moves we had over the last X amount of time? Maybe it's a year. And uh, he says, well, I see three or four times we moved as much as 12 to 14 percent. So we'll just call it 12 percent. So three days out of the last and I'm making a number up three days out of the last 250 trading days. Uh, we've moved uh, uh, 12%. So a 12% move is going to be, and I'm going to say three over 250. Uh, so that's one, that's less than 1%. That's like a one, two, three, four sigma, a four standard deviation probability of happening, which means it happens three out of every 250 days. And odds are it's not going to happen again. So I'm thinking, I'm just trying to bring my way towards uh, that. I'm saying, well, that, that that would mean you know the straddle any straddle that trades that's worth forty two dollars is a sale because forty two is like a twelve percent move uh, 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 to me because that's the worst case scenario and now the straddle is thirty dollars which is seventy five percent of forty two dollars right so that's yeah. three quarters handicap of the move and then I have to ask myself and I'm not going to I'm going to let Tom take it from here I have to ask myself well how many how much how many times do we get a thirty dollar or uh, whatever that is? Maybe that's a an eight percent move. How, how how often do we get that? And maybe Tom doesn't go in that direction, but maybe he just handicaps. This is the worst case scenario, and I'm going to make a decision from here. So, what, what do you do once you've once you've handicapped uh, the most likely worst case scenario? Well, I look at that, and I, I just think that uh, I think that uh, you can see what I'm doing up here. Okay, fine. Um, I think yeah. 
the technicals to me overwhelm everything here. And I agree. And obviously, and that's why I wanted to start with that because you know it's got a heavily influence. I'm almost looking at this saying, you know what? I want to buy a 350 put <laughs> and sell a 370 call. But you know, uh, what do I know? I have no idea what to do with this. But go ahead. Uh, yeah. So I mean, um, so yes. I mean, so there's four gaps. I think it's unsustainable. I mean, to your point about the release for the subscription thing, the raising of subscription prices, I think it's kind of, you know, a little, uh, I don't, you know, is it a little curious that they would release it two days before earnings? I don't know. But it seems like anybody- Well, it, 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 is, it isn't standard operating procedure to release- No, certainly not. Before earnings, number certainly one. Certainly not. Okay, so now let's let's just be traders in the room, just you and me be traders in the room. And, 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 and everyone else just, I guess, you know, they're also traders, but- uh, we, we can't hear them. We can see them type, but they're not very active typing. So the heck with them, right? Um, so you and I are sitting in the room, right? And we're like, yeah, it's kind of kind of wonky, kind of weird that they would be releasing such big news before earnings. So, so Tom, I'm asking you, you know, because you're my you're my boss in this. I'm the junior trader on the desk, right? And I'm saying, I'm saying, does that make me think the earnings report is going to be really good or really bad? You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I, I, look, I, I just think that I think I think there's two important things. There's two play two important plays here. I think that the fact that yes, was it yesterday's line 358. The day before off the news 357. Today, whatever the heck it is, 354. Right. I mean, it can't seem, it doesn't seem, where am I looking at? Right here. It doesn't seem to be able to take out with any type of conviction this low from the previous earning, which was 356 and a half. Okay. Right. Notice okay. from there, close there, that low is 356 and a half, closed around 365, which curiously enough is about the next day's high. And right. then boom. So I think on the, I think the upside's capped. Now why that would, that set the stock will trade 500. Times. Okay, cool. cool. Think, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is really cool. All right. So you're basically backing into this from a technical analysis thing. You're saying you're tying an earnings event to how the market act last earnings event, and you're going to bring bring this back to options in a second. So I'm following you now with my own chart, and I'm saying, oh, he's basically saying as high as we are, we're still not above the last earnings. So that, as as your as your protege, I'm now saying to myself, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Release the bullish news uh, uh, before the earnings because the earnings are going to be lackluster. And let's see if we can get it stabilized before we release the bad news. Stop out some shorts. Okay. So now you got me slightly bearish. Uh, right. And, and then I, I think also, like, if we look, if we look at the descent from the earnings peak, from the, you know, the post earnings, the day after earnings peak to here, my God, that's dramatic, right? Yeah. That's certainly dramatic. And that took two months and a week, right? Or what's that? Right. Nine and weeks, roughly. But to get almost to that same freaking spot took three right. weeks. Right, right. I mean, that's I can see why unnatural. Yeah. yeah, that's unnatural. This is a steep decline, right? By any freaking stretch of the imagination. This is a steep decline. And, this, and, and a steeper incline. And a steep, right. This is, yeah. this is yeah, what's Your bearishness is showing, Tom. Well, this is 40% <laughs> off the top in about, uh, you know, two months, you know, nine, 10 weeks, right? And then right. boom, right there. So, I mean, so, so here we go. So, uh, so I'm in agreement with you. If I hear you right, I'm looking at it like this. I'm saying, all right, look at this. I'm, plug, I'm trying to plug into your, to your thought process. All right, so the market's really had a steep incline. That in and of itself is something that's not sustainable. All these gaps, yeah, we're going to fill them eventually, but maybe the first gap is on the table uh, for the next couple of days. I'm not really sure. But hey, look at the last, look at how it acted the last two earnings that came off. But look at where the market is right now. It's still not above the last, the price it was at the last earnings release, which closed at 364.70, to your point, 365. And it went down as low as 356. And we're not above that 356 area right now. So now when I put all this in my little stew, you know, my little, my little, like, you know, I want to be, think like Tom stew, I'm going, all right, uh, I'm a little bit more bearish. I, I kind of see the earnings coming out uh, a little bit negative as they have been before, but a little bit of positive comes out first to stabilize the stock, kind of screw some shorts over. At the same time, technically, I look at the market and I say, wow, we've really come a long way fast. Uh, looks to me like, uh, but I see that reference point at the last earnings level as that might be that might be the line in the sand for me. All right, so so now I want to play. So now I want to play on the option side. Do I play long options, short options, calendar spread, uh, uh, or something else? And that's got to be based on your 
historical perspective of where law was in context now, Tom. What do we do? What could we do? Yeah, sure. I, think, um, I think to your point about where the straddle was priced is, is uh, very important. I think the, the 52 and a half straddle currently about uh, you know, close to 30 bucks. Is that low I, or high? I mean, I, I would I just felt no, like I mean, you know, it's about eight and change percent, uh, you know, 8.7 percent. I think it's cheap. OK. Would I go out and buy it? No, but I want to leverage. I want to leverage. I want to leverage that. So I'm not a net seller of options. Right, I, right. It, it's really hard to do that calendar spread that you like to do that uh, with vol like this, I think. Right. So I want to leverage that. I think the vol is kind of cheap. I didn't even get an outside. I want to play. I want to play the historical, uh, the, the, the historical st history that presents itself after earnings. Right. So about a 10 or 11, you know, it's about a 12% move on average, but it's at least a 10% move on average. And I know that we've got, we just say four holes, one, two, three, four holes in the stock. Yeah. <laughs> I think we, I, I would look at this. I think that we got a, this high was three, 358. This low is 230. <clears throat> so that's what 128. So 64 is to the mid, the midpoint of that would be 294. The midpoint of this whole ascent would be 294. I think you have, this is the uh, 200 right here. Uh, bah, 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 yeah, so I'm right. not even looking, but I'm going to guess that even though vol's low, skew is very pronounced in the puts right now. Just guessing. Yeah. I, yeah if I'm wrong, that, I'm wrong. I, I'd no, 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 no. Not, not as much as you would think, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it, there's a couple of clicks. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Okay. I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, just. But nothing more than normal. No, nothing. Uh, I mean, it's maybe, I'm just trying to think. I mean, everything's, I mean, skew in, in 200 in, in, in the land of 150 volatility, one day volatility is a relative thing, right? It's just everything's lottery ticket. Right, so right, right. Uh, it kind of loses its, its uh, I, I, I'm not saying it loses efficacy. So, I just think. So what's your knee jerk trade that you would want to do? My knee jerk trade is look, I want to leverage. I want, I, I say, look, and I think it's, I think it's all dovetailing with the, with the market as a whole. Okay. I think the market's at an important inflection point. I think twice right. 40, the 2640 level would be, if I'm not mistaken, the midpoint between the 2340 low and the 2940 high. high. Correct though. So that's yes. 2640. We kind we kind of like uh, up around there. I, I don't have my big screen up. I saw 26. Wait, I'm I'm popping it up there now. 25 oh, or some crap like that, right? Is that about right? I don't know where we are. Let's right. see. Uh, uh, our low was 2305. Uh, we're trading around 2620 now, and the high was. 20, I don't know, 2790, 2790. No, no, I'm just saying, no, 2940 back in, back in January, January 20th. Oh, you're going, January you're going 24th. With, yeah. I'm looking at the recent. Right. So look what you got. Uh, that, 2944, 2944 and change. Yeah. All okay. right. So that was, when was that? That came in when? January 24th, January. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're correlating. That came in. Okay. I got 2944 spot 75, October 3rd. Of 2018. Oh, okay. Then it, okay, that 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 okay. That's October third. Fine. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. That was 29.40, and the, the previous top was like 27.90, right? Before we before we had that corrective move down. Uh, let me see. I have to go to weekly. Um, uh, yeah, I see what you're talking about now. Yeah, there was there was a high uh, of uh, 28.76 in the S and P, and then there was a high uh, a, a newer high in September of 2018 of uh, of uh, 2947, and then right before the sell off, uh, October 18 was 2944 and change. So, uh, am, I, am, I, am I answering your question properly? Uh, yeah, I'm looking right. What am I looking? I'm looking at this thing. Okay, this is this, this top 126.18, 2872. That's the uh, you mentioned that. That's cool. That's, that's what I'm looking at. So, I think in terms of time here, you have time coming in. 2872 you're, you're, you're six months you're you know six days what am i six days nine days oh it is january i'm sorry i don't know why did i say that? yeah but and the, and the other high is in october Correct. right so you, okay my so we, we got that that thing coming into play i think we got the october 3rd thing which is you know that is at least interesting so i'm looking at 2640 in the spx you know look hey full disclosure i said i was flat at 2533 to february 9 low right in here right um I thought you should be short at around twenty five seventy three, and I am short, and I've sold some more. So I, I will, I won't, I won't cheer. I'll just say, I'll just say, uh, Mazel Tov when the time comes. <laughs> That's you no know what I mean, as long as the position's open, I'm not going to say congratulations. Uh, so maybe I think we got twenty six. Yeah, I think you got another fifteen, maybe fifteen handles on the uh, top. 
top side. Look, I think the, the market has a better tone to it, right? We open low, we go high, we grind. But high. your point Almost. is you're trying to factor out the S and P part part of the of the Netflix, and, and, yeah. and you're trying to see. Okay, all right. Sure. Already so I'm think, thinking about doing S and P doing an ES versus Netflix uh, straddle spread. <laughs> yeah. So, so I think that Netflix has got. To, I mean, I, I would think that there's got to be some freaking headwinds. I think that the volatility coming, you know, the, the volatility being at eight, you know, that straddle being less than nine percent. When we know it's been at least a ten percent mover, look, right? You can sell it at nine percent. I think you can go out five percent lower. But how do you feel when it's down thirty-five bucks and the straddle's right. five dollars against you? Then what are you going to do there? That's the question. So I mean, it's always cavalier to say, "Well, it closed here." Yeah, I know it closed there. But what do you do? Turn the screen on? You just turn your screen off all day and walked away? It's a whole different game. So well, you if you're a bank, buy, you do that. You can always right, ask yeah, the Fed to help you. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be. You know, you can be, you're going to get squeezed one way or the other. So right. yeah, that said, I think 294 is in play. I, I want to play that range. We said roughly about a 12% move over. That's what, like 42 bucks is 310. Wow. Okay. I think we've got a gap in here. This gap right here, this low of 301.65 down to 290, two, yeah, 302 to 298. Right. Let's zero in on that. And I'm going to say, you know something? I remember a funny thing happened in, I'm dating myself. Maybe I'm not dating myself. A lot of the Globex people remember this. I remember a 50 handle down Globex print on Martin Luther King Day 2007, which kind of portended the portended the Great Recession fears that we took. I think it was a 1235 print in SPX. Perhaps Shy Girl or somebody else will know that who trades it, but we traded 1235 overnight on Martin Luther King Day, and no one knew where the hell it came from. Oh, I remember that. Well, Actually, that, I was trading silver spreads at that time, and I made a killing for some stupid reason. But yeah. It was, is that, you're not even talking about the flash crash. You're talking about 2007. Yeah, it was February 7th. Oh, no, I was, was natural gas then. Martin yeah, I was laughing there. about that. Thank God I had nothing on. <laughs> so so now, th now that happened. And now, So I think you got that coming in. I think you have timing in terms of the market. Maybe about a week off that, that top here. 365 days from that top. Uh, I think that's interesting. I think this thing here, the, the steepest descent. I want to look at this 301 level. I think we got a chance if I don't get it tomorrow, maybe I get it in maybe I get it in a uh, in a week or so. So to that end, here's my play. I want to uh, uh, let me let me share what I'm doing here. I'll share and share. Does that work? There you go. Yeah. Uh, what, what you got to do here when you when you're making these bets. I'm going to construct this thing. What I'm advocating doing is selling next week's, next week's Jan 25 expiration. Okay. Only four days of trading next week, right? Right. I want to sell next week's 300 put. I want to buy the week after February 1 expiration, 295 put. That would essentially be delta neutral. That spread would cost me, if in the middle, it's about 32 cents. Of course, you're about 35 cents. If you're getting it. Okay. If you want to bid for it. I think this is going to give you a lot of latitude. Wait, I'm sorry. What that's that would be if you did that trade, it would be an uh, it would be a debit of 35 cents, roughly. You said uh, mid market right now is 30, yeah, 36 cents right now. Okay, yes. so call, I'm gonna I'm gonna just say 30. I'm writing down 35 cents. Yeah. Okay, so so all right. So after you're done explaining that, I'll, I'll hit you with some questions that are that are uh, sure. So I look more, more obviously if I get the move to 301 tomorrow. I'll be, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be fine. But what I want to assume is that Netflix, Netflix volume is usually about 40. I'm going to say it comes into somewhere around the 52 week median. It's been, it's been as low as 24. I, I would, I would knock volatility down in February 1, down to about a 40 ball. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Question, just specifically on that. You would knock vol down because of the earnings being over or because of the move? Or both. I would there may be a little bit of both, but certainly because the binary, you know, the binary event is is over. Sure. Right. So post earnings, I, yeah. So I, vol, I like you shave ten vols off of that, right? No more than that. I mean, I'm just trying. It's uh, February one, two ninety. I mean, it's a short term. It's a short term option. I mean, a vol yeah, is probably it, like it's it's about, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I mean, yeah, I, I want to work at worst case scenario. I don't think it's going to trade down. 40, no, I understand. I understand. But I want to look at worst case scenario. So I'll, I'll, I want to. I, I actually I misspoke. I save it. Down, I'll mark it down to fifty. My bad. I'll mark it down to fifty. That's about a third off where it's currently trading. But you okay. also got to realize I'm buying seventy five vol out in February one, but I'm selling whatever the hell this is. What is this ninety vol? So I'm taking in fifteen clicks. More importantly, so, hey, screw the amount of clicks. I'm vol backwardation for for a one week spread. Is that what you're? Yeah. Me? So that's what I'm. That's the way I'm looking <laughs> at. It. So I, I can. I can. Game. I get it. Right. I get it. 
So I'm looks like if I could pay 40 cents for that, I get that whole week. Right. Right. If I right. get three, you know, if I get 320 in the stock, 320 is, is, you know, is that 10% roughly roughly at the top here? If I get right. 320 in the stock, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'll start to become a winner. So I'll have the, I'll have room from 320 down about 285. And Hold on, stop one second. I, I want to say this because because you're you're saying something that 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 triggered um, uh, something I was taught. Everyone, write this down because everything Tom is saying, I want to say this in one sentence that probably means nothing to you unless you're really familiar with options, but is totally valid what he's saying. When you're looking at an option with a one week spread between it, uh, uh, an option volatility spread of one week. Uh, uh, the duration of which on the on the longer end is say three weeks and and, and the other one being two weeks when you're looking at a, a backwardation of 15 percent vol and here's the phrase here's the phrase the gamma between the front month and the second month or the front option the second option I should say is negligible that 15 percent vol is not going to give you is not going to justify the gamma spread between the two. And I think I, I remember learning that a lot. That you know, uh, we're not talking about a short squeeze where where uh, uh, the, the January twenty fifth put goes in the money, but the February first put uh, doesn't go in the money uh, because February first Netflix cures cancer, and February and January twenty fifth Netflix causes cancer. We're talking about options with a fifteen percent backwardation with a one week spread. There, there's probably more gamma. <laughs> In the February option, there isn't the January 25th option. I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but the point is the gamma is the key to knowing options. And with a 15% vega or vol backwardation between a one week, between a two week option and a three week option, that's insane. That makes me just want to just constantly sell that. I don't see how, I mean, I'm not being naive. I can lose money, but that seems like a great risk reward. I like that. Yeah, and I'll give you. I'll give you a quick peanut. I'll not fall down. If, I'll run. I'll run fifty vol. I'll, you know what? I'll run sixty volatility in. Um, you know, because I mean, options traders or anybody. I mean, you want to look at risk reward. You always want to look at the worst case scenario, and figure that the profits will take care of themselves. Okay, if I make if I make um, uh, next week's next week's options roughly sixty volatility, and the stock trades, it will say. Uh, 300 for argument's sake and i make the other one 50 volatility with the stock at 300 you know thank you thank uh that spread on friday we trade 320 tomorrow if we trade 320 tomorrow we're, we're closing there okay uh right. spreads worth about those two dollar, guys. <laughs> dollar 75 think about it so You're if right. the stock acts with if, if, if the stock adheres to historical post earnings norms and we get the 10% move. And that's a coin toss, right? I get that. It's a one out of two. I'll make it buy right, now. Right, I don't know if it's right. one out of two. I, I think it's better than that, but whatever. But you know, you're, you're, move. But let's, let's be clear. You like to work from, you work from the worst case scenario to the best case scenario. I understand that. I think that way as well. The worst case scenario is the 10 to 12% move, you know? Right. And, and, and you're calling it a coin toss because you're really managing your risk. Reality is it's not a coin toss. It's way less than 50% chance that that'll happen. But but that you're managing your risk. I get that. I get that. Right. So I, I do. Like, I, I always want to assume I'm wrong and I'm be pleasantly surprised when I'm not. So I think if we, if we trade 320 tomorrow, you know, close 320, I mean, that spreads worth $1.75 and it just gets better because you, you got the concept of tickety talk, of tick tock over that three day weekend with the options I'm short. So I like to play. I think it's, you, you, you can make, look, if, if you're lucky enough to get that, what do we say? We say we spread for the spread 40, 35 cents. 35, that's, yeah. 35. That's, that's 4X return, right? That's a 4X return. That's not a bad return on your freaking money right there. Right. Just if it here's to get, look, and the other thing is you're paying 35 cents. So I think these types of trades, I, I think I want to leverage that. And look, if, if, you know, and I got room, but hey, look, the earnings are a disaster. Absolute disaster. You okay. only lose five bucks at the moment. Okay, let, let's see. Where do I, I want to say, hey, where do I have room down to? I mean, what, you know, where is the real, where do I really start? You know, I, where, do we, exactly, where do I lose five dollars? You're absolutely right. And, and let's assume that even though volatility blows out, the relationship, the backwardation stays between 15 and 20 percent of all. So if the market collapses, couldn't you just, you know what I used to do when I was on the floor? We used to have sheets in our hand. We would be thinking about that. I would just take the strikes and move them up the amount of money I thought the market would go down. You know what I mean? Right. You just do that. Yeah, exactly. 
So what I'm looking at, I think you got room. What I worked up is you got room from 320 to 287, knocking volatility down to 60 in the Jan 25 expiry. And right. And um, 50 in the um, in the other one, in the, in the Feb 1. I'm sorry, the Feb 1. And what do you see? You see, you see my option screen, right? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I do. I don't know what I had on there. All right. Something's going on in the markets. I'm checking the news. How are you doing now? <laughs> I'll look at the news. I just see Caterpillar. What's Caterpillar doing? I just. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, Dow Jones reported that uh, the U.S. is weighing lifting China trade tariffs to break the stalemate. <laughs> okay, oh, so stocks boy. are going to rally on that, right? And uh, uh, that smells like we're blinking. Uh, Trump, Trump, Trump's not saying that, but uh, uh, <laughs> that's really so. I mean, oh, I, okay, fine. Well, I don't get into politics of it, but okay. So yeah, there, there's. There, she reports the U.S. is weighing. Here's the key for everyone who just said thank you, Maddie, and thank you, Sunil. The U.S. is weighing lifting China trade tariffs, like China is considering, uh, uh, you know, uh, giving us uh, a billion dollars just for the heck of it. Okay, moving on. Stocks are rallying. Uh, <laughs> what are we going to do now? Anyway, but to say that is pretty aggressive. That's pretty aggressive for the Trump administration after being so ha heavy handed on the negative side to just we're weighing. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's, it, things are definitely picking up now. OK, so where are we? Um, OK, so that, that would be my play in, in uh, Netflix. Right. Okay. A, a, a uh, spread like that. Uh, OK, what do you, what do you, what you want to look at? I have another one for you. Uh, we, what kind of press for I didn't look at PP&G, but I got one. That's Wait, going before we do the PP&G, I want to do it. I want to do a trade with you for a dollar. Can we do that? Yeah, okay, sure. Here's the trade. Here's the trade. I'm gonna I'm gonna just come up with it. I'm gonna use a Larry type of concept and 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 uh, something that's simple, uh, but basically two legs of an iron butterfly. And I want to say which side do you want to take? You ready? Go ahead. Okay. So we both have to sell the uh, Netflix is trading three fifty five. Okay. We both have to sell the three fifty five straddle. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. We both have to sell three fifty five straddle, and. We can buy either the 350 put or the 360 call for a dollar. Uh, uh, which, uh, which side do you want to take? We, we, we say this again. Go ahead. So we're, 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 this is kind of like uh, this is me interpreting how Larry thinks about the morning uh, because he's a net option seller. So he'll go out there and he'll say, Do I want to? This is what I think he does, uh, uh, or this is how I do what I think he does. I think this straddles a sale. Uh, what option would I want to buy? What am I most afraid of? The upside or the downside of being short that straddle? And that's the option he'd buy. So for example, he may not go out and sell the straddle, but he may say, well, uh, if I had to sell the straddle, uh, I'd, be, uh, I'd be more worried about the upside, I'd buy a call. So to me right away, that's the way that Larry can rationalize. I'm bearish and I'll buy a call if I have to. You know what I mean? So for you and me, just option to option, we're both going to sell the 355 straddle and that straddle is going to expire um, January 25th, let's say. Well, you pick the day. I don't care. And we're both going to buy an option, the 360 call or the 350 put. W which would you do? I would buy the put. You buy the put? So would I. That sucks. Okay. Then would you rather buy or sell the straddle, that 355 straddle? If, if that's buy, you it, do, buy itself? No, no, you we're going to do, we're gonna sell one option against. We're going to reinvert. I want to take the option side of a trade with you. You know what I mean? Do you want to buy you. or sell three fifty five straddle against the three against another option? Mm. It's a vertical trade. It'll be a vertical trade. Would I buy the three fifty five straddle or sell it? Whatever you're doing, I, I'm doing the opposite. I'd buy it. I think it's cheap. So yeah, that's I'd buy. It. Yes, go ahead. I'd okay, buy so you're long the three fifty five straddle. No, that's cool. That's cool. And I'm short three fifty five straddle. Okay. You're allowed to trade one other option, 360 call or 360 or 350 put. What do you, what do you want to do? You can buy or sell it. I don't care. I would want to sell the upside call. So, so you're going to be long. If you're, if, 
So you're long the 355 straddle, short the 360 call. That sucks, but that's what I want to do. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm short 355 straddle, which means I'm long the 350 put, right? I have the same position as you uh, expressed in different ways. So, um, okay. So uh, I'm short the 355, 350 put spread and short the 350 call. And you are long the 355, 360 um, uh, call spread and long the 355 put. So basically... Between the two of us, if anyone can follow along, is Tom's long 355 put and I'm short 355 put. That's basically it, right? That's correct. Okay. So, I mean, synthetically speaking. So, all right. So, why don't we just stick with straddles? I'll be short 355 straddle and you'll be long it. What's the 355 straddle right now? Uh, whatever expiration you want. I don't care. We're going we're gonna to wash the trade out uh, at 4 o'clock. Or four thirty when the market closes. Four. Uh, the three. When, when the earnings come out. Yeah, I'm sorry. This week, yeah, tomorrow's straddle, three fifty five straddle is uh, thirty bucks. Thirty bucks bid market, give or take. Thirty bucks. Okay, so you're long at thirty. I'm short at thirty. Fine. Yes. Uh, and when do earnings come out? Like they they're, they come out today. They come out after the close or during the market. Or four fifteen. Oh crap! So when will, when when will our when will our options expire? Tomorrow afternoon, three o'clock. Oh, okay, cool. So we'll carry these options to expiry and the winner pays the, the, the winner uh, gets a dollar from the loser. That's and we'll just fine. keep the tab running. That's fine. For the next trade. That's fine. All right, cool. So all right, I sell you one three fifty straddle expiring you said Monday or yeah, Monday. No, 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 no expires today. Expires tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. January it expires uh, tomorrow night. Friday. Friday, Friday close. Yes. Right. I, I, so I sell you one Friday three fifty straddle. Expire one Netflix 350 straddle expiring Friday 4 p.m. and the price is 35. The price and, is, uh, and you buy it. The price is 30 bucks, 30 dollars even. Oh, 30, 30. Damn it. I thought I, I thought I just tried to pick you off. Um, <laughs> all right, so I sell it to you 30, I sell it to you 30 bucks. And yes, you could scalp all you want, you could scalp all your gamma you want, but you're stuck with that straddle and you have to get out with me and I have to get out with you. Fair enough. That's more than fair. That's for a dollar. Fair. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. Um, what's the other thing you want to talk about? What did you want to move on to? Um yeah, quickly. Uh, stocks are already backing off of that of, of that news. It's just like it's, it's so funny that we've cried wolf so many times. I don't think the market has had to take truth anymore. Imagine if we really are lifting the tariffs. <laughs> what a disaster. I mean, but you can't, you know, you can't believe the guy, right? I mean, that's kind right. of sad, right? If the way you cried wolf, you're absolutely right. Right, right. Unfortunate, kind of sad, but I mean that's that's the reality. Yeah, uh, it's funny. I, I was lucky. I, I I just saw some cat up there. That's good. Okay. Um, but why don't we talk about that? Cat. Are, are yeah. You, hey, you, yeah. Cat. You, you know, going against that? Yeah. Do I got well? I I, I I did really well on the thing for the, that whole freaking cycle, and this last week I got a little banged up. Well, you know what? Yeah, then, cat you know, right here. One thirty. Explain a winner so people can see that. That might be a really good use of time. Why not go through a trade from beginning to end that you already can do the autopsy on? Yeah, and, sure. And this like, is cool. Let's do that. Category, so, you said, right? Right. We got hit, look, We got the Netflix trade on, right? We're buying Feb 1, 295 puts. We're selling Jan 25, 300 puts. We're paying 35 cents. Pay for yeah, this. now you're paying 35. I got you up. It's 30. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that. that no, you're talking oh, the about the, I'm trade, talking right? about the. Uh, I'm talking about the push spread that we have. Oh, so that's our trade. That's is that a trade you're actually going to do, or something you're putting down on paper? I've, I've been bidding for it. I have not gotten filled. I, I'll probably, yeah, I'll pay, I'll pay forty cents or something like that. I like that. I like I'm going to be, okay. be forty-one bid just to front run you. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, cat. Uh, yeah, look. I mean, this is. A, I had this trade on from a while ago. Funny, interestingly enough. It was. It happened on some type of Trumpian news, uh, late November, early December, about a deal with China, on right. a Friday afternoon, um, where uh, he said they may have a deal with China. Blah blah blah. This thing ran right in here. This is God. History doesn't repeat, but it also. Would you say whistles the same tone? Oh, right. Yeah, exactly. History doesn't repeat itself, I, but it has the same melody. I forget. Who yeah, like here's the. Free, I'm, this is scary. This is. Uh, it's a Friday. You could test my freaking memory. Boom, right here. What they is this said. the Argentina oh, meeting that we were like so happy about or something? This is 11:30, right? I'm looking, yes, this yeah. is a Friday. You see this? What's the high that day? 35.97. That's that's. We're gonna have a. 
right? We're going to have a deal. Close 35.67. Okay. It was it ramped up higher. Ramped up. I like those words. Ramped up because of whatever kind of bull, you know, what kind of stuff was coming out. We're going to have a deal with China. All right. Right. So I wind up buying a calendar. I buy a Jan. It's hey, these, these puts. I buy the Jan. They're, they're, they're Requiem at, Pen at, at Chinchenzas. They're, 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 they're going out there. Um, they're going into that deep, dark slumber. Did you uh, take Latin? Did you take Latin in high school? Very, I just didn't, do very, didn't do very well. Uh, so <laughs> I bought these puts. I bought the Jan 20 puts. And, and I think whatever, I mean, say the vol was 40. Right. But I think I sold the next week, which would have been December 5 expiration. Those 120 puts at uh, 75 volatility because it was obviously there was news in the freaking market. So I think I paid $1.16 for that put spread. And then the morning of or pre-market or 9.30 to 10 o'clock, it's good. It's 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 a go. We got to deal with China or something. Stock trades forty four ish. I'm sorry, forty two and change. And then by ten o'clock, somebody says, "Oh, that's just bullshit." And then the stock just comes in, and then bloop, you know, it goes down to one sixteen. Now it's funny. We got. I mean, what's today's high? Thirty five ninety, almost to the freaking penny where it got that Friday on eleven thirty. Scary. Uh, but um, yeah, so. I wind up doing that spread. I bought a Jan. I bought a Jan twenty, this regular way Jan one twenty put sell the December five one twenty put pay a dollar sixteen, and then be, now I get lucky because I mean the stock drops precipitously, and now I now I got a game because now all of a sudden volatility ticks up. Right. So what I did was I just kept buying. I just kept rolling, buying back the short one twenty put, selling next week. Just almost very very mechanical because I had inflated vol. I, I bought this thing for a dollar sixteen. Now right. I roll it out. I think by the second week I was in it for nothing or 30 cents. Right. And then I just kept generating credits. I mean, I just did this every freaking week and then wound up. I speculated with some upside call spreads. Then I'm, I just sold stock, but just now uh, on the 135, 145 call spread I bought. Nice. Anyway, so anyway, it's blah, 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 blah. I get all that out and um, I was able to just keep rolling puts the entire time and take, and for, you know, for a trade with a dollar 16, I probably made 5X on it. I mean, at least it was just that's uh, great. Just yeah, you know, dumb luck. But I mean, off a he off a headline. Right. You know? But that's but that's what we're playing. We're playing dumb luck. We're playing. You, you're you're playing the uh, uh, the um what I'm looking for, uh, the, the the black swan for lack of a better word. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So uh, so you know it's funny. Look, we we, we 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 talked about this level before, right? But the SPX level twenty six four was it was twenty six forty. Yeah. Twenty six forty five. That 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 you like. I'm usually wrong, but that could have been it on a headline. They, they don't top on bad news. I know that. Uh, right. <laughs> I just right. made that up, by the way. Uh, they don't wait, wait. Um, they don't so I think that's that. interesting. I think here, what, 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 and I put this chart up a bunch of times in the freaking chat. I put up a VIX chart and I put up the volatility of VIX options and they're pushing this, the third lows. And I'll put this up for you again. Okay. You do whatever you want to do. You ain't, you know, you, obviously, no one gets the freaking, you, you ain't getting the freaking top. Uh, chart parameters, hold on one second, put this in for you. Option apply vol, apply, okay. Here's, here's VIX file. Do you follow me? Are, are you watching? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't have I'm watching it. Hold on, I don't have uh, it on. Well, I'm looking at your uh, options uh, grid right now. I want to put this uh, chart on. There we go. Did you no, see I that? See Got it. Okay. Here's VIX file. This is, I'm sorry, this is VIX, the, the VIX cash. That's the actual VIX. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, the statistic or whatever. Here we are, we're pressing some moving averages, uh, the 50, I guess. I'm sorry, the 200. Yeah, look at that. Okay, we're pressing this 1832 level. Okay, um, now, but here is vol, here is vol of VIX. All right, these are this 30 day, 30 day uh, VIX vol, which is as low as it has been since. You know, October 3rd on the market. That's where the market peaked, right? October 3rd, you said? So that's, wait, wait, that's, that's the, uh, I want to be clear before I start spouting out words that, that, that I, uh, that, that I know the meaning of, but don't know that I'm applying them right. When I'm looking at the volatility is, oh, so that's the option implied volatility on the VIX? Yes. So that truly is the implied vol of the VIX? Yes. Okay. So I can say, it. I love to say it. That's leptokurtosis. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Right, the vol of the vol is leptokurtosis. Anyway, go ahead. 
Yeah. So that I think is that, that I think is so, so. I mean, you have that. I mean, I think this is very very interesting. I think the, this this volatility level is at or near the same spot it was when the SPX topped on October. What would you say it was October second, October third, twenty nine forty two? I think you've got this this vol of vol coming in here. You've got VIX in a falling knife descent. To, I mean, I, I don't know how, how much moving averages mean in this thing because it is it is a statistic, right? We're talking about I'll, like a, a derivative of a derivative, of, a right? Moving average right. So, of a derivative of a derivative. <laughs> yeah. So I think this this to me is a leading indicator. Right. This to me is what I would be concerned about. That all of a sudden, you know, look, everybody's buying tails up in here, right? Oh my God, it's the end of the world. Right. It's the end of the world. I got to right, whatever. This file's going to hundred. That's you know, right. Wherever it's going, right now. I hope tails, we don't move around anymore. We've got 15 handle range days and we only go higher. You can see it. Psychology changes on a dime. Hey, quick you know? question. The the implied vol, the options that trade on the VIX, that's a call skew or a put skew market? I'm guessing call skew. That's a call skew. Yeah, I think, yeah. It, well, that's what the disaster is, right? The disaster is on the upside. Right, right. So so basically it's 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 a it's a yeah. heavily call skew market with fat tails on the call side. Meanwhile, uh, so it's a call skew on a, on a it's a call skew on volatility, which is a put skew on the underlying. Uh, okay, that completely makes sense. Buying calls on the VIX is like buying puts on the stock market. Gotcha. Okay. So cool. I think that's I think that's very very interesting and worthy and noteworthy. I think here, vol of vol at levels we haven't seen since October third. Look, it's been bouncing around. I'm not going to lie. Right. But uh, you know, I think vol of vol is cheap. That's a fact. Right, I mean, cheap relative to the last three months, three and a half months. Right. VIX is coming dramatically. SPX has rallied up to the midpoint between that twelve twenty four low and the October third high. Do with it what you will, but uh, I think you have to be aware of that. And I think that's you know, the way I want to play it is that I think there's there's probably a hard move coming when nobody suspects it. I think you put that with the Globex low that I thought came in 12 years ago on Martin Luther King Day out of nowhere, uh, 1235 SPX. We got a short week. VIX curve is now in contango. It's deeply in contango. You know, it's 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 normalizing, if you will. Right. But I don't know if I don't know if you know all systems that go right here. Look, I mean, here we go. I mean, look at the now we're starting to come in pretty good here, right? Yeah. I mean, you got to you got to ask yourself. I mean, what you're seeing here is is it almost like what you were seeing here and, 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 you know, on the inverse? Is it almost the inverse? Where I mean, I put this in the chat a while ago. I mean, I I, I thought what you were seeing at 20, in the 24s and 23s was indiscriminate selling, buy any option at any freaking price, right? Because volatility is just going higher. And right. they can't, they can't win. No way they can win. Cause I mean, it's right. just eventually someone gets left without a chair, right? That's just the way it, that's just the way it goes. Right. I'd be having it now. It's just, I've been burned. You know, you got a long vol bag holders up in here, getting out, get me out new shorts. Who's running in to buy this freaking thing at 26 45 today. I mean, you got to ask yourself, I mean, in the great big Venn diagram of investing Vince. Yeah. If, do you think the cross section between twenty six forty five buyers and twenty three forty sellers is a pretty good intersection right there? You know, <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> you think, think they're the same guy. I think it's. <laughs> you think, I think it's, it's the same guy? I think it's grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know who's right? I mean, now, now I have to buy it. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Uh, I could have gotten it a lot cheaper about three weeks ago, but that was scary. Now, yeah. nothing but green lights. I know, I know. Green lights, dude. The stock market is a gift and good now. Forget volatility. You know, we have to buy because it goes up. I think the average hold time for a stock share is like, like less than two seconds now compared to, you know, uh, uh, when people were actually investors. But yeah, there's your point. Uh, everyone's a momentum trader, and now it's really probably time to be a, uh, a fade the market trader. Sell the dip. Uh, sell buy the dip. Sell the rally. Right. So I mean, we're getting. To, I mean, look. No, we're over an hour right now, so it's five after three. Um, hey, look, I, yeah, I'll give you one trade. Here's, here's one. Here's one I put in the chat before. I didn't get it off. I've got some other parts of it on. Uh, what do I want to do? Here, I'll show you this. Um, where is this? There you go. You see that? 
That could the express. Uh, yeah. I do. I, I do. Ex I see it. Express comes out tonight. All right, I'll do. It, I'll do it very, very quickly. Here, the stocks had a move. It, it it bottomed, I guess, like they all did on Christmas Eve. Traded eighty six and a half, I believe, somewhere in there. Eighty six and a half. The previous high, that high on eleven twenty nine, was one fifteen. Right. So I'm looking at one hundred one. I have a number one hundred one eighty. I'll keep it quick. Uh, that's more of like a fifty percent retracement. It's also there's some type of moving average coming in there. But one hundred one eighty has been my number. I have been selling these these jam pars. But the hell, earnings are tonight, fellas. So you know, right. it's, it, it, it's, American it, Express it's, earnings are tonight. Tonight, it's a oh, flip wow. and switch kind of deal. All right, I've been selling these par calls, jam par calls, and buying a Feb fifteen one hundred five. Par means hundred, folks. If you're not familiar with that terminology, right, right. Par <laughs> means hundred. Uh, <laughs> so I've been buying a Feb five jam par calls, but I started. Uh, uh, full disclosure, I probably did it at an average price of. Uh, it's probably yeah, now it's trading at about. 75 cent credit. I'm in about, I'm at, I think I'm into it for about a 48 cent credit. So it's a lot better now. I moved on to other things, more spreads. I think what the, the spread I put in here in the chat is, uh, here we go. News Q and A, one second, baby, uh, right here. Here, vol's inflated. I think it's a 5% mover on expiration. Oh, I never got this off. I was trying to sell, I was trying to buy, if I have one, what am I looking for? Trying to buy 125. What I want to do is sell this week's 90, tomorrow, today's 94s, tomorrow's 94s puts, and buy next week's 93 puts. I was, going to, I was bidding a penny for that, still in there bidding a penny. And at the same token, here's another one. This is a good spread. You could do this. This, this might be the better spread right here, fellas. Gen 18, sell the 102s. I think 10180 is stiff resistance in the stock. The stock has come up 86 and a half to a traded par. It traded par a couple minutes ago so it's up it, it, it you know it kind of went almost halfway to where it 50 percent retracement as it did uh i want to sell these 102s tomorrow's 102s by next week's 103s i'm i am bidding i'm bidding for that spread i'm trying to take in a 18 cent credit so do one of them do both of them I think they both give you great risk reward on that one on that giant next week 103 this week 102 call spread 18 cent credit do it for 15 cents if you can get it off I was, I'm just trying to be a be a bit of a slob but that right. thing gives gives you room up to 106 tonight this thing's had a big run look it, it put, it, put it this way stock trades 108 you're gonna have a you're gonna have a put on for the next two weeks next 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 week you know you know at right at with the stock at 107, 108. And American Express has has run up uh, with the financials, but doesn't right. necessarily mean it's a bank. You know, American Express is not what it used to be. Right. So right. I think that's that's a real good freaking spread. I like the Netflix spread. And uh, yeah, there you go. I like it. I like it. All right. So most important takeaway is that you're, I'm short of the 350 straddle to you. I'm long the 350 straddle, 350, okay. 350, 350 straddle. Right. That's fine. Strike the, 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 the price is 30, expiring tomorrow at four o'clock. And uh, tomorrow at four o'clock. Tomorrow four o'clock for a dollar. Um, and uh, and uh, get ready to get ready to get harassed. I think <laughs> that's <laughs> quite all right. Um, no, but quite... actually, the takeaway, the takeaway, I think, and I thank thank you very much, Tom. The takeaway is I just learned that I'm trading the wrong products here. Netflix going into earnings, diagonal put spread. With a one week, uh, a diagonal two week, three week put spread, roughly, uh, with a 15 vol backwardation means there's basically no gamma spread between the, between the two options, and the fade is going to be outrageous. Uh, 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 at on top of the fact that the backwardation will probably go away, and even if the backwardation doesn't go away because uh, Netflix craps out, uh, I, I don't really think that you're going to get too hurt by that 300 put with the 295 put. Uh, against it, you're not even you, you, the max you can lose is five dollars. I think the max you could really lose is three dollars before you get. Yeah, that's that, that's the way I look at it. You're absolutely that, right. That's right. Am I am I right? I mean, you know. No, that's, that's about right. That's about that's, right. I think that's I got a great trade. That's a yeah, great trade. If I get it, I didn't get it yet, but we'll see. Right. I think it's right. a good. I think it's a good yeah. trade to do. I so mean, basically, I, yeah, it's kind of like I, I kind of, I'm kind of walking away looking at it like this: five percent chance of five percent chance of losing five dollars. You follow me? Just like you uh -huh. know, if you trip on the way to work, get hit by a bus, and the market drops. Right, we'll give that a five percent chance, even though it's much lower. Five percent chance of losing five dollars. Okay, um, 
uh, I'm going to say a 50% chance of scratching, right? And I'm going to say um, a, a 30% chance of, of uh, owning that one week spread option, right? Yeah. For 35 yeah. cents. That's how I'm looking at it. And then that's 85 and 15% chance of, I don't know. That's right, what I'm which at is, right yeah, that, that's, that's always in play, <laughs> at least for me anyway, always so, in play. So it's more than 15% usually, but I'm not going to let people know that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Vince, great speaking with you. Thank, and thanks so for the education. That, that backwardation is really pissing me off. I'm in the wrong market. <laughs> well, you, you monitor that spread. It might be, uh, it's, 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 uh, yeah, I think you got real good risk reward characteristics. Oh, I love that. I love that trait. Right. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Tom. I appreciate uh, uh, taking that in. Thanks. Hey, good being with you, Vince. Everybody have a great day. Great weekend. Enjoy the games. Suck on that straddle, Tom. Eat it. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be the first time, buddy. Take care. Okay, talk to you later.